Well, good morning, folks. It's Thursday. And again, we're inside, but this time because it's just chucking it down rain. Um, and again, this is such an important part of Scripture. So we're in Job 34, and Eli Hugh is... And, and you know, honestly, this is a part of Scripture that I, I really feel that I didn't grasp or understand until fairly recently. And uh, we'll read from verse 5. Job says, I am innocent, but God denies me justice. Although I am right, I am considered a liar. Although I am guiltless, his arrow inflicts an incurable wound. Is there anyone like Job who drinks scorn like water? He keeps company with evildoers. He associates with the wicked, for he says there's no profit in trying to please God. So listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil from the Almighty to do wrong. He repays everyone for what they have done. He brings on them what their conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would prefer ju pervert justice. Who appointed him over the earth? Who put him in charge of the whole world? If it were his intention and he withdrew his spirit and breath, all humanity would perish together and mankind would return to the dust. Now, I cannot conceive of a more important doctrine than this one. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong and that the Almighty would pervert justice. And therefore, I think if you believe that and you accept that, then a lot of the questioning, a lot of the doubts and a lot of the fears turn out, it, it's so much easier to, to deal with them. They, they turn out to be misguided and not really helpful. So, what Eli Hugh is doing, and he's saying to Job, and, and some people do think this is harsh, he's saying, look, God, God doesn't deny you justice. God is really not answer, answerable to you. And he gives these reasons. God cannot do evil. God cannot do wrong. God is just. It's unthinkable that the, the Almighty would pervert justice. And who put God over the earth? That's not an accusation. That's saying God is God. And he then points out that if God wanted to, he could withdraw his spirit and all humanity would perish. And I think that's also an important teaching because it's saying the only reason we're still alive is because God, it's, it's in him we live and move and have our being. And be because God's spirit is here. Now, we tend to look at these things and we tend to say, so here we are, COVID-19, and, you know, I'm a wee bit obsessed with it at the moment, purely and simply because I'm hoping to go on holiday on Monday, but I have to pass a COVID test on Sunday first. And given the level of um, infection here, it's possible that either myself or Annabel could fail that and we, we, we would live with that as it is. However, I think that... We tend to look at these things and say, look, there's this kind of perfect world that's being spoilt either by humanity or by these things that are happening. And we actually need to grasp that it's only God who keeps all things together. If he withdrew his spirit, that would be it. And he's promised not to do that yet. Not yet. There'll come a day of judgment. So... Here's where I come with this, and in in just for me, in a really, really practical way. I think within a framework, and that framework means God cannot be unjust, God cannot do wrong. And so therefore, when I feel that things are happening in trying to understand why they are happening, or what can be done about it, or what the Lord has to say about it, I, I have to have as this foundation, in fact, not just the foundation, the walls, the justice and the goodness, and the power, and the love of God. And then I have to think about everything from that perspective. So I hope that's helpful to you. I think Elihu is saying to Job, you know, no, God hasn't lied. And Job will eventually repent of this and apologize for this. You can understand it. It's perfectly understandable. But when we look to ourselves or to our own circumstances only or as the foundation, then we question the goodness of God. 
when we understand that the Lord our God is good and just and fair. And, and if you struggle with that, I just simply say, look at Jesus, because Jesus is God. And so it's, I, I cannot describe how practical and how important this is for me, and I, I hope it's important for you as well. Okay, we'll come to the last one for this week uh, or tomorrow. But until then, God bless you. And remember this, whenever Satan comes and accuses and tempts you to despair, remember this. There is profit in pleasing God. Far be it from God to, to do evil. God will never, will never pervert justice. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye.